Hello boys and girls, it's Miss Liz and welcome to another week of Sunday School. We are going to begin by singing the song, the B-I-B-L-E. Now, do any of you know what that spells? That's right, the Bible. So uh, the words of this song and the hand motions are gonna go like this. The B-I-B-L-E, yes, that's the book for me. And then this next line is, I stand alone on the word of God. So when you say, I stand, I want you guys to stand up. You'll say, I stand alone on the word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. So let's try that song out. The B-I-B-L-E, yes, that's the book for me. time. The B-I-B-L-E. Yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the Word of God. The B-I-B-L-E. Okay, and the second song we're going to sing is also about the Bible. And the words and the hand motion is it's a read your Bible, pray every day. And the words and the hand motions are going to um, be read your Bible, pray every day. And actually, I forgot, I want you guys all guys all to start by crouching down um, on kind of really low, uh, crouch down kind of like a, in a little ball. And then you'll sing, read your Bible, pray every day, pray every day, pray every day, read your Bible, pray every day, and then you'll say, and you'll grow, grow, grow. And when you, every time you say grow, 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 you're gonna kind of stand up slowly, inch up, inch up, until at the very end, you're gonna be standing up nice and tall with your hands up high, okay? That's the first verse. The second verse is, don't read your Bible, forget to pray, forget to pray, forget to pray, don't read your Bible, forget to pray, and you'll, and then you'll shrink, shrink, shrink. So from standing position, you'll start to crouch down again. And you'll shrink, 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 and you're gonna keep on shrinking, and you'll shrink, shrink, shrink. Don't read your Bible, forget to pray, and you'll shrink, shrink, shrink. And then we will sing, read your Bible, pray every day. We'll sing that one more time at the very end. So let's try that song out. So we're gonna start with everyone crouched down in, like a little ball uh, close to the ground, okay? Read your Bible, pray every day, pray every day, pray every day. Read your Bible, pray every day, and you'll grow, grow, grow. Start to grow, and you'll grow, 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 and you'll grow. For don't read your Bible, forget to pray. You ready? Don't read your Bible, forget to pray, forget to pray, forget to pray. Don't read your Bible, forget to pray, and you'll shrink, 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 start to shrink, and you'll shrink, 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 and you'll shrink, shrink, shrink. Don't read your Bible, don't read your Bible, forget to pray, and you'll shrink, shrink, shrink. Okay, time to sing, read your Bible, pray every day. You ready? Read your Bible, pray every day, pray every day, pray every day. Read your Bible, pray every day, and you'll grow, grow, grow. And you'll grow, grow, grow. And you'll grow, grow, grow. Read your Bible, pray every day, and you'll grow, grow. Great job singing! And now it's time to hear from our very lovable friend, Maxwell. Hi boys and girls, it's Maxwell! And I have two more jokes for you from my wonderful selection of jokes. I know you guys all look forward to them. Okay, are you ready? Here we go! 
What room is impossible to enter? A mushroom. <laughs> I get get it. A mushroom. Whew, I love these jokes. Okay, okay. Are you ready? Why did Humpty Dumpty have a great fall? To make up for his miserable summer. <laughs> get it? Great fall. He fell. But I'm using it like uh, because it's a season two and it's fall and you have a great summer fall. Oh, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll stop. I'll stop. I'll stop. Anyway, I wanted to talk to you about a story in the Bible today. And that story is about a wee little man. And his name was Zacchaeus. And you can find the story in Luke 19, 1 through 10. And when I say he was a wee little man, I mean he was a little short, not very tall, and <clears throat> he had trouble seeing over crowds. And there was a crowd forming, and he wanted to see Jesus, and he couldn't see over the crowd. He couldn't see Jesus, but he desperately, desperately wanted to see him. So do you know what he did? He climbed up a tree. He climbed up a tree so that he could go and see Jesus and be able to see over the crowd. That's so cool. Have you ever, ever been so desperate that you wanted something that you didn't let anything get in your way? You know, that's the way we should be when we want to see Jesus, when we want to, be, to know about Jesus. We should want nothing more than to know Jesus and to get to be uh, one of his followers. So Zacchaeus, he climbed up that tree and he watched and he was trying to hear. And, and do you know what? Jesus passed by and he looked up in the tree and he said, Zacchaeus, come down. You want to be able to see me? Well, we're going to go to your house and we're going to talk. And do you know that Zacchaeus took Jesus to his house and he learned about Jesus and he actually got saved and he became a follower of Jesus that day. How cool. And do you know that you guys, I encourage you to do whatever you can to learn about Jesus. We can do it by reading God's word or having your parents read his word to you and learning memory verses. Memory verses are really good because then we can pull uh, verses whenever we want. Like John three sixteen, for God so loved the world that he loved that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's a great memory verse to remember. That's one that we all should know, right? So get to know Jesus, learn from him and get to know him. And do you know there's a song, a Sunday school song about Zacchaeus? I'm gonna try and sing it. I don't know if I can, but I'm going to try my best. Mr. Matt tells me I don't have the best voice, but we'll see. All right, ready? Here it goes. Zacchaeus was a wee little man, and a wee little man was he. He climbed up on a sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see. And as the Savior passed that way, he looked up in the tree. And he said, Zacchaeus, you come down, for I'm going to your house today, for I'm going to your house today. Zacchaeus was a wee little man, but a happy man was he, for he had seen the Lord that day, and a happy man was he, and a very happy man was he. All right, boys and girls, I hope uh, you enjoyed this song. 
maybe you can learn it and sing it along to your with your parents that would be fun all right boys and girls until next week remember i love you but what more importantly god loves you bye 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 what do you want to be when you grow up do you think you are ready now to do the work of what it is that you want to be when you grow up? If you, wanted to be, if you want to be a surgeon when you grow up, are you ready now to start operating on someone? Or if you want to be a firefighter when you grow up, are you ready to drive around the ladder truck and uh, put out a fire with one of those heavy hoses now? Today we're gonna to learn about a little boy who becomes king at the age of eight. And we're gonna learn about the things that this young man does to help his country become better. Today's Bible story comes from 2 Chronicles. Now I wanna ask you, the book of 2 Chronicles, is that in the Old Testament or in the New Testament? If you said Old Testament, you are correct. The books of 1 Chronicles and 2 Chronicles are basically history books about the nation of Israel. And they tell the story about the people of Israel from the time after King Saul to the time after uh, the Israelites returned from captivity in Babylon. Um, that is after the book of Daniel uh, around that time. The Chronicles, First and Second Chronicles, basically tells the entire history of Israel. In the book of Second Chronicles, we come across a little boy whose name is Josiah. And his father... Ammon was the king of Judah. Can you say Ammon? Okay, good. Unfortunately, Ammon was an evil man. In fact, the Bible says that Ammon was even more evil than his father, who was the king before him, and his name was Manasseh. Can everyone say Manasseh? All right, great. So um, when Josiah was eight years old, his father was murdered and he was appointed the king of Judah. Can you imagine if you became the president of the United States at the age of eight? Do you think that would be an easy or a hard thing to do? It probably would be a lot of fun for about a day or two, but at some point the meetings would get really boring and it would be a very difficult job. Well, Josiah became king of Judah at the age of eight. And unlike his father and his grandfather before him, he, according to 2 Chronicles chapter 34, did what was right in the eyes of the Lord. Slowly but surely, he undid the evil work of his father and his grandfather. He got rid of all the idols that his ancestors worshipped and set up and started pointing his people toward God. Now at the age of 26, Josiah ordered the uh, temple of God, which was in a little bit of disrepair, to be repaired. It was a little bit damaged and they collected money and they, put, they wanted to repair the temple. Um, and while the temple was being repaired, they came across and found the book of the law. Basically, the words written by Moses. Do you remember what the books of the law are in the Bible? They are the first five books of the Bible. Can you all say them with me? You ready? Let's say them together. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Let's do it one more time. Ready? Say it with me. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Great. Now those are the first five books of the Bible. Those are the books of the law that were written by Moses. And those were the books that were found in the temple. When these books were found, they were brought to Josiah. And Josiah had his secretary named Shaphan. Can you all say Shaphan? Okay, that was his secretary. He had his secretary read the words to him. And upon hearing the words of this book, Josiah realized that his nation had sinned against God 
because of all these idols that had been set up and had been worshipped for generations and generations. So he gathered up his entire nation at the temple and they renewed their promises to follow God and to keep his commands. And according to 2 Chronicles chapter 34, verse 33, Josiah removed all the idols from all the territory belonging to the Israelites. And he had all who were present in Israel serve the Lord their God. As long as he lived, they did not fail to follow the Lord, the God of their fathers. Today's memory verse can be found in 2 Timothy 3, verses 16 and 17. I would like you guys to repeat after me and follow with the hand motions. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. All right, let's do that one more time. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. Our memory verse for today teaches us four things that we need to know, stop, change, and do. Can you say that with me? Ready? No, stop, change, and do. When 2 Timothy says that the scriptures are useful for teaching, that means it gives us knowledge of the things that please God. And when the scriptures are useful for rebuking, that word means pointing out your sin so that you stop sinning which is why in our memory verse, uh, I had you do this motion for rebuking, meaning stop. When the scriptures are useful for correcting, that means not only should we stop, uh, stop sinning, but we should, should change our behavior. And we should change our behavior from sinful behavior to godly behavior. And then when the scriptures are useful for training in righteousness, that means that we actively do things that spread God's love and his message of salvation to other people. And that is just what Josiah did in 2 Chronicles chapter 34. When he had the book of the law read to him, that is when he gained knowledge of God's word. He stopped the idol worship of his nation and then the, the uh, Israelites as a nation changed their behavior and recommitted themselves to following God. And then through the rest of Josiah's life, the Israelites followed the Lord and did the things that pleased him. For today's activity, you will need the activity sheet that was emailed to all the parents. And you can print it out in color if you have a color printer. Or you can print it out in black and white. And if you don't have a printer at all, then you can take a blank piece of paper and you can write down the words that are on the page. Uh, so if your parents are able to open up the email, you can see the different titles that are on each part of the paper and you can write those down. So what you're going to want to do is, I will go ahead and take this version of our uh, activity sheet. You're going to want to fold this paper in half, lengthwise, 
twice with wise. You're going to want to fold it in half like this. And then you're going to want to fold it in half again so that the first page is on the front and pages two and three are in the middle and page four is on the back. So it makes a little booklet. And this is your um, book about, I guess, things that you want to remember and make note of about the Bible. So on the front, you're going to write your name for this book belongs to. So I'm going to write my name here. And then you're going to, uh, for page two, it says, my favorite things about the Bible are. What I would like you to do is actually work with your parents to find, uh, I guess, a favorite Bible verse that you might have and write down whatever your favorite Bible verse is. So I'm going to write uh, Colossians 3.17 down because that is one of my favorite memory verses. And you can write down the whole verse uh, on your, uh, you know, take the time to do that once you figure that out with your parents. And then for page three, the Bible says God loves me. And what I want you to do is take some crayons and I would like you to draw yourself on that page. So I'm going to draw me with, I guess, long black hair since I have a lot of black hair. And I have a purple crayon since I'm wearing a purple shirt today. So I'm going to draw my shirt. And some eyes. And a nose. And some lips. All right. And that is a drawing of me. And then on the back, it says, who can I share God's word with? So on the back, I would like you to write down the name of one person that you feel like you would like to share God's word with. Somebody that needs to hear God's word. Someone who needs to hear about Jesus Christ or needs to hear about God's love for them. So write down uh, a name there. And that is it for our activity sheet for today. This is something that I want you to keep handy, keep it somewhere safe, keep it somewhere where you'll see it so that you can remember how important God's word should be for you. One last thing before we end our lesson today. If I was really hungry and I had this orange with me, would I be able to satisfy my hunger just by looking at this orange? Would my body get the vitamin C and the nutrients from this orange if I just smelled it and rubbed it up? Would that give my body the nu nutrition from this orange? No, I actually have to open up this orange and eat it in order to satisfy my hunger and get the nu nutrients from this orange. Well, in the same way, in order for the scriptures to be useful for rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, first, we must gain knowledge of the scriptures. And by being taught and being taught about the things that please God and the things that displease Him. So how do we do that? Well, one way you can do that is by reading the Bible and reading it uh, with your parents and discussing with your parents the things that are in the Bible. So the next time your parents ask you what bedtime story you want to read, ask them to read you a Bible story and talk with them about what the story means. Another way that you can gain knowledge about the scriptures is by continuing to watch the Sunday School videos or watching other Christian videos such as Veggie Tales or Superbook Academy or What's in the Bible. Another way, of course, also would be to memorize scripture. One of our Summerama songs from last year comes from Psalm 119 verse 11 and it says, I have hidden your word in my heart 
that I might not sin against you. Try to do at least one of those things every single day so that you can grow in your knowledge of what pleases God and in your knowledge of, of Him and who He is. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for today's lesson. Thank you for this lesson about Josiah and how he had taken your word and learned from it. And then he... Uh, and then he stopped the idol worship in his nation, and he was instrumental in turning the entire nation back to you and in helping the nation to follow you all of his days. God, we pray that you would help us to take the time to read your word, to take the time to learn about what it says about you and what it says about us. And we pray, God, that you would help us every day to grow more and more in our knowledge of you. And in doing so, God, that you would help us to be able to share that with our friends and our family, especially the ones who do not know you yet. Thank you for this day, and we pray that you would help us to have a wonderful week. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. See you next week.